Recruiting is tough. And if you're a computer science major who's gone through at least one recruiting season, you know that to be true. Everybody likes to say that majoring in computer science is enough to get a nice cushy tech job, but that's not the truth. And the actual truth is very far from the fantasy that you've been sold. At its very core, when you're a beginner with no experience, software engineering recruiting is simply a numbers game. It doesn't matter how well prepared you think you are. It doesn't matter how good your grades in school are. And it doesn't matter how impressive your side projects are. You're still going to be rejected by a ton of companies. Remember, you're not the only smart kid applying to these roles, these new grad roles, these internships. There's 10 and thousands of other smart kids competing with you for these exact same positions. So how do you actually manage to get an interview for an internship or a new grad role? Well, you need to have a good GPA. You should probably have at least one side project, and it probably helps if you go to a top school for computer science. After that, it simply is a numbers game. Apply to every single position you see open. Apply as soon as they open. Don't have an ego and think that a certain position or a company is beneath you. If you have no work experience, you don't really have many options. Apply to everything. Another way to get to that interview is by getting a referral. If you know somebody in a company, it'll help you get a job at that company. Shocker, I know. But seriously, ask that person for a referral or to vouch for you and it'll help a ton. But don't worry if you don't know anybody and nepotism can't work for you. That way, you can still get a referral. Go on LinkedIn, look up people that work at that company that you might have mutual connections with. This be through a person, or maybe you went to the same school, or maybe you're from the same hometown. It doesn't matter. People like helping people, especially people that are from the same backgrounds as them, and you should be able to use this to try and get referrals at some companies. It'll pretty much guarantee an interview. There's another very harsh truth you have to face about the interview itself. It doesn't matter how well prepared you think you are for a role or how well suited you think your skills are for a specific role. You're going to have to lead code if you apply to enough companies, especially big tech companies. Is this fair? Probably not. Does it make sense? Also not really. But big tech companies are so large and they have so many people applying that LeetCode is the most efficient way for them to clear candidates of some basic technical competency. It's super simple to prep for, so just get to work. Now, I'm not saying that it's easy to do LeetCode hards. What I'm saying is that following the simple study plan will help you get really good at LeetCode, which brings me to my next very related point. For most of you, you're much better off doing only lead code during recruiting season. No side projects, maybe slack off on school a little bit, but focus on lead code. The return on investment there is crazy, especially if you're trying to get into big tech. Of course, have fun, go to class, keep your grades kind of up, but lead code as a tool and study thing, it's just outsized return value. It's stupid that it has this much value when you're starting off, but it does. And if you know the rules of the game, you might as well play them to the best of your ability. Now, of course, some people will have more success with side projects and go towards startups. There's a whole different variety of situations that I can't cover in one video, but lead code as a skill is tremendously valuable and that's unfortunate. If you want to get good at lead code, go watch need codes videos and go to needcode.io. You'll get really good once you go through those problem lists and truly understand the patterns behind these problems instead of memorizing them. If you memorize them, you're going to have to do this again next recruiting season. But if you understand the problem solving process and the actual problem patterns, you'll have to do much less studying next time around to get back to the level that you are at when you finish studying the first time. Oh, also, before you start lead code, you should probably learn data structures and algorithms. And if you haven't taken it at school already, then go and do an online course. There's tons of great ones out there and you should do it as soon as possible. Last but not least, when it comes to behavioral interviews, you're going to have to be at least a little bit likable and personable. The solo tech bro, awkward nerd type situation thing doesn't work for everybody and is probably not going to be working for you. You need to have at least a little bit of charisma. And if you don't have that naturally, then you can prep it. If you have anxiety going into these interviews, then write down all the questions that they might ask you, everything that you can think of. Things like, tell me about yourself. Tell me about a time you went above and beyond. Tell me about a project you're proud of. Write down these questions, then write down your answers and go through them in your head over and over and over again. Prep them with a friend and grow comfortable talking to people about your own accomplishments and how you as a person could fit into a company. Once you get comfortable talking about yourself, you're going to be able to do really well in these behavioral interviews and get that offer. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe. It would help me and the channel out a ton. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.